This study is about an interesting topic, and you don't want to say stupid. You know, a lot of people know me, and you know, you call it stupid. There are things that people say, and there are things that people believe, honestly, that are not Bible. And you'll find religious people, you'll find Christians, television, movies, science. We are looking at a broad of, of I got 18 things here that people will say and believe. And they think it comes out of the Bible. We're going to look at what the Bible says about it. And we're going to make the truth from a lie. We're going to show you what the Bible really says to the stupid things that people believe and say. And this is not even a complete list. We may do others later. But the first one, if you open your Bible to 1 Timothy 6.10. People say money is the root of all evil. You've heard it on television. They use, you know, every time they want to get religious, they want to say something from the Bible. Money is the root of all evil. Well, the Bible says, if you look here, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money. Money is not evil. You can send money to a missionary and get people saved. Help people get saved. You can give money to a Christian family in your church that needs groceries or something. But when you love money, 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 I want more money. I didn't get enough money. Then it becomes evil. Okay, so we have Matthew 16, 25, or number two. We've got a few scriptures to look at. Matthew 16, 25. And the saying is, God helps those that help themselves. Now, I may not say it exactly how it's said. I mean, when I wrote it down, I wrote it briefly. But there are people out there, God will help those that help themselves. You've heard that expression. But the Bible says, Matthew 16, 25, For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. Second Corinthians. 12, 9. And he said unto him, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Uh, that's Paul. Paul got to the point where he has, he has a thorn in the flesh. And he could have got the peroxide if they had it. He could have got the alcohol if they had it. And the band-aids if they had it. And the iodine if they, if they had it. Sometimes God won't help you. I have had a life of ear infections. I have prayed. I have prayed. And ends up, I end up going to a doctor to get medication. Romans 5.8. I'm sorry, but these things are wrong. But God committed his love toward us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You didn't do nothing. You can't help yourself to get saved. By the way, the principle of that verse, God helps them to help themselves, actually comes out of the Quran 11. 11. You got to watch out where the, resort, where the sources come. All right, Romans 8, 28. Most Christians know this verse. Romans 8, 28. <laughs> If you've been under or listened to Dr. Peter S. Ruckman, you know this verse. God wants me to be happy. We know all we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Sometimes things are not happy. I'm not happy. You get me to church with a bunch of Christians, you get me in the Bible, I'm happy. 
You get me where I don't have to deal with the world and all that. I'm not happy. I'm not happy that, you know, I get exhorted by the electric company. I don't appreciate the, the, the rising of the water bill. I don't like when people who need help don't get it and people who get who absolutely are worthless don't do nothing get help Ephesians this is an unhappy world now I'm happy in Christ Ephesians 426 but this world I'm sick of this world be angry and sin not let not the sun go down upon your wrath. God wants you to be happy. Then he turns around and says, you know, there is a chance, there is a way to be angry and not sin. I'm angry with the Jehovah Witness movement. Not the Jehovah Witnesses. I'm angry with, with, the, with the hierarchy of the Catholic Church. I'm angry that the church says sodomy, homosexuality, lesbian, bestiality it's not a sin you know why because his bishops his priests are involved in homosexuality and maybe himself i don't know why would you make such a bold statement if it doesn't hit your backyard that makes me angry i'm angry when a person gets up to a pulpit and quotes the wrong bible i am angry that christians are deceived a worldly kind of angry. I'm I'm angry that these people get their cars to make the mufflers sound loud. That aggravates me. I'm aggravated. I'm trying to go to bed at, at, at 10, 11, 12, 3, and 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, and they got the racetrack here with the 24-hour race. That makes me angry. Okay? 2 Corinthians. Life is not always going to be happy. 11.26. You, know, you go down in the valley. Sometimes a valley is education. When you're sick, miserable, sorrow. In journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, perils of heathen, perils of the city, perils in the wilderness, perils of the sea, city, perils of the brethren. And weariness and painfulness and watch. Paul said, I had plenty of perils. You think there was times that he wasn't happy? You think there was times he was upset, sad, angry, fearful? I bet he was. Genesis 3, 6. Genesis 3, 6. This one here, the apple. The apple is the, the, the fruit of the, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And when we saw the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wife, she took the fruit, fruit. Never does it say apple. Now, apple, we'll look in the Bible. Apple describes Israel. Apple describes Israel. Ap uh, apple is Israel. And then the fruit of the, apple, of the trees. Nowhere. Does it say that apple. Was what Adam and Eve ate. According to the Bible. It's a fruit. We don't know what kind of fruit it was. We don't know if that fruit is around today. Or it disappeared when, when they came out of the garden. We don't know. Never, you know, Adam's apple and all. Come on, that that that's tradition, that's folklore. Okay. Matthew two. Matthew two. When you see the nativity scene, the three wise men at the birth of Jesus. Now, when the when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Judea, in the days of Herod the king, there came wise men from east to Jerusalem. Okay, saying, where is the king that's born of the Jews? There, he, there, there it is, verse 11. Here's the wise man. And when they were come into the house, they were not in a house when Jesus was born, and saw the young child, not infant, 
not anything. Verse 16. Herod gets upset. Herod, when he saw he was mocked of the wise men, there they are, was exceeding wrath and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and all the coast thereof from two years old and under. Jesus Christ was no higher age than two years. He wasn't an infant, so you would figure a child that has been weaned to two years old when the wise men show up. Now, let's take it even more. Search. Wise men. And we want Matthew. We want Matthew. Okay. Wise men. Shows up four times. There came wise men. Chapter 2. Called the wise men. Chapter 2. The wise men. Chapter 2. The wise men, chapter 2. Nowhere in the Bible does it say three of them. Now, there were three gifts, gold, silver, and frankincense, but not mention three wise men. It could have been one. Oh, well, two. It has to be more than two. It could have been 25. All right. This one here will have to... Show you on the screen. Quoted by a fall coach. This too shall pass. That's the quote. And everybody, oh, that's got to be Bible. Oh, look, look at that. He quoted from the Bible. NFL Bible. Yay. No. That's nowhere to be found. This too shall pass. What the Bible says, it came to pass over 452 verses. So what you think somebody may be quoting the Bible, and we got a couple more like that. They are not quoting the Bible. Be careful. Be careful. Listen, I've, listen, I've done that street preaching. I've gone and Quoted a verse, and I didn't quote it completely. And I have to go to the Lord. I have to plead the blood of Jesus Christ because I have committed a sin that's written about. You shall not add or subtract to the word. I've accidentally done it preaching. I've actually done it teaching. It's wrong. Luke 11. Luke 11. Pass this to your friends. Let, let them be, you know, some of them will be like, wow, I didn't know that. It's true. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Luke eleven twenty four, And when the unclean spirit is gone out of the man, he, wa he walketh through dry places, seeketh rest, and findeth none. He saith, I will return unto my house which I came out. And when he cometh, he finds it swept and garnished. He, then he goeth, then goeth he, excuse me, the unclean spirit, the devil, and taketh him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, they enter in, dwell therein, and the last state of the man is, wor is worse than the first. That is reformism. That's not salvation. That's, you know, you clean up your life. You, you put everything in a washing machine. You put it in the dishwasher. And you get the mop and the bucket. And, uh, you know, it, it, cleaning this is next to godliness. Chapter 15. You can clean your life with a mop and bucket, but if you don't clean your life with the blood of Jesus Christ. Fifteen, he went and joined himself to the citizen of that country. He sent him onto the fields to feed the swine. He had feigned to fill his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. No man gave unto him. When he came to himself, he said, how many higher servants of my father had bread enough to and despair, and perish, and I perish with hunger. I rise and go to the Father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy highest servants. And he arose and came to the Father, but when he was yet a great, far, great way off, the Father saw him, and had compassion, ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. You know what that kid smelled like? You know what that son looked like? 
He's been in a pigsty. He's been with pigs. The guy is filthy. You know what cleaned that man up? Repentance and the father's love. Nowhere does a father say, get soap and water, get that kid in the shower, get that kid in the tub. And he repents. He says, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight I am no more worthy to be called thy son. The father said, bring forth the best robe. The kid is a filthy, stinking pigsty. And there's no mention of water and soap. You're clean by the Father. You're clean by the blood of Jesus Christ, not your cleanliness. All right, Jeremiah 33, 3. I'm trying to rush because I want to get all these in a, in a good time. But I shouldn't be rushing. All right, God works in mysterious ways, and he does. And he does. And we may never know what he has done. It'd be amazing when we get to heaven and at the judgment seat of Christ or maybe, you know, walking the that we get a revelation of all the times that God protected us and we never knew it. We may never know or may be revealed in heaven why we got all those red lights. Why I had to run back in the house and get my keys. Why I had to come back in the house to go pee. The alarm clock didn't wake me up in time. What we think, oh, it may be a glorious to God. And it says, Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me, I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So here God tells Jeremiah, hey, I'm going to tell you some things you don't know. Okay? Mark 4, 10 or 11. Mark 4, 10 or 11. 11. And he said unto him, Jesus Christ, red letter, unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Mysteries, unknown, mysterious. God says, I'll give you the answer. Okay. First Corinthians. There are things mysterious of God. There are things that God's not going to reveal to you. There are places in my King James Bible, I got a question mark. And those question marks were put years and years and years ago. Some have been answered. Some may never get answered. 1551. I had one time, one of my question marks was, and the preacher was preaching, or the evangelist was preaching. I think it was the evangelist that came in. And he was just rambling on. And his rambling, his, his bunny trail answered one of my questions. And I didn't get it that night. I'm reading through my Bible and I saw that question mark and I remembered that. Uh huh. Behold, I show you a mystery, 1551. So don't conclude, Colossians, that all of God's things are mysterious. Some are. Where's Colossians? There's Colossians. 122. In the body of his flesh through death, present you holy. Uh, okay, that's not it. 27, possibly. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Here's the mystery. What's the mystery? The Holy Spirit indwells in us. Christ indwells in us. The Trinity indwells in us. So God is mysterious in some things. In other ways, he's not. All right, Psalm 711. I love this one. Psalm 711. I'm going to bash your preacher. I'm going to bash the Christian. God loves the sinner and hates the sin. Psalm 711, and God judges the righteous. God is angry with the wicked every day. That wicked is a sinner. All right, a sinner, a sinner, a sinner. Romans, New Testament, Paul is writing, Romans 9, 13. 
God loves the sinner, hates the sin. As is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. That's God speaking. Esau's a sinner. Esau sold his birthright. God says, I love Jacob. He's a sinner too. Read the life of Jacob. He's a sinner. Esau's a sinner. All of sin comes short of the glory of God. I love Jacob, okay? God loves the sinner. But Esau, he hated. God loves Adolf Hitler. He cursed the nation of Israel. God loves the Pharaoh of Exodus. Give it, won't let Israel go. No, he hated him. There are times in the Bible to hate. Ecclesiastes by Solomon said, there's a time to love and there's a time to hate. And we read in, in Romans, there's a time to be mad without sin. So love the sinner, hate the sin is not biblical at all. All right, 1 Corinthians 10. And I'm sorry to say, this is Lisa, my first wife who died of cancer. She would say, God will not give you anything you cannot handle. And you've heard some people say that. They're in trials and tribulation, or you're talking to someone in trials and tribulation. There has no temptation taking you, but such as common demand. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. Tempted. Not going through pain, but you, but will with the temptation also make a way escape that you may be able to make. There are Christians today, now, they are in extreme pain, maybe in a hospital, maybe in a wheelchair, maybe in bed at home, and they're taking hard medications for pain. And if they don't have that medication, or that medication works exactly four hours, eight hours, they know when the hour is up and when it's taken next pill. And there are Christians who don't have the medication. They're in the third world, and they are completely, absolutely suffering. In an ungodly nation, serving God in Jesus Christ. There have been people who have been in extremely pain, Fox's Book of Martyrs, in the ways that the Catholic Church has tortured them for the word of God, for the blood of Jesus Christ, for the cross, for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And some of them died by burning alive on the faggots. Nero would take Christians and dump them in tar and put them up on a pole and set them on fire and would have a party and say, gentlemen and ladies, we're going to have a party and these Christians will be the light of our amusement. Don't say that God won't give you more. Hey, listen, the devil got permission from God to, to practically wipe out Job. Job got to the point in his book, and he, he's mad at those three men. He's mad at God. And he wished death. He wished he would have been a stillborn. Okay? You know, sometimes the worst advice is Somebody coming to you, you got problems, you got troubles. Somebody's gonna go, and some it may be a loving kind, but they want they, they want to help you. I've had Christians, I mean, Pat, I am a, I'm twice widowed. I've had two wives die of cancer. I know how you feel. How many wives do you have? Oh, my, my that's my wife right there. Is she dead? Well, no. Are you a widow? No. Then you don't know how I feel. There are people giving me stupid advice about being a widow. You a widow? No. Then shut up. Don't you dare tell someone, oh, I know how you feel. And you never went through what they went through. They got cancer. You got cancer? No. Then don't tell them I know how you feel. Have you lost a child that has died? No. Then don't you tell someone who lost their child, I know how you feel. You're a liar. Shut up. Jonah 2-2. Oh, here's one. I've heard preachers, 
I've heard out of pulpit many times. Jonah 2.2. 2. Jonah never died. Jonah 2.2. 2. And he said, I cried by the reason of my affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of belly of hell cried I. You don't go to hell unless you died. Got that? Jonah died. Jesus said if Jonah was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jonah died. Jesus died. Jonah was resurrected. Jesus was resurrected. Jonah went to hell. Jesus went to hell. And if Jonah didn't die, Jesus didn't die. And if you say Jonas didn't die, then you are mocking and you are lying about the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ died. So did Jonah. It was buried. So was Jonah. And we'll look at it in the next one. And he was rose again three days and three nights like Jonah. Now, number the next Jonah, he was in a nasal cavity. He was in the, in the pocket of the mouth. No, you liar. Jonah 2, 1. Jonah prayed unto the Lord, out, his God, out of the fish's belly. Jonah went into the mouth, if it's whatever it's called, the throat, and into the belly, dead. His body went into the be fish's belly as Jesus' body went into the, the, the heart of the earth. Jonah died. Jesus died. Jesus was resurrected. Jonah was, was resurrected. Jonah died. He was in the fish's belly. King James 1611. Anything else is garbage if it didn't come from Antioch. You got yourself an Alexandrian Bible. You got yourself a Vaticanus. You got yourself a Sinaiticus. No. Westcar and Hort. No. Read Jonah 2 1 and 2 2. There it is. Look, look, read it. Look at it. Go back, pause this video, and read what the Bible says. All right, next one. We don't have a Bible verse for this one, so we keep looking at Job. Idle hands is the devil's workshop. That is nowhere, nowhere. Now, I'll show it to you. All right, so idle hands, devil. Workshop. I can show you. This is what I can show you. Let me make sure I spell it right. You ready? Sorry. Not in the Bible. And people quote it to you like it was. They will quote it to you like it is a Bible verse, and it's not. I'm sorry. Okay, Mary was sinless. Luke 2. Luke 2. 24, and I didn't see when we started, so we got a couple more. Luke 2, 24. This is Mary. She's given birth to Jesus. She's gone to the temple. As is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens up the womb shall be called holy unto the Lord. That's Jesus, the firstborn of Mary. To offer sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now get that. Now get that. Right here. When he was eight days old, was accomplished. They circumcised the child. And then the mother. Purification, the mother. Leviticus. Leviticus 12. Okay. If a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, verse 2. All right. That's Mary. She, she conceived of the Holy Ghost, God, and brought forth a man child, Jesus. All right. Come all the way down. Now, verse 7. Well, verse 6. And when the days of her purifying was fulfilled for a son or for a dog, a dog, daughter, who can say Jesus was a son. She shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, a young pigeon or turtle dove for a sin offering, unto the daughter of the tabernacle of the congregation, unto the priest. So every woman that gives birth, to, whether male or female, there's no other sexes, 
who shall offer it before the Lord and make atonement for it. She shall be cleansed of her issue of her blood, all the blood with, with the childbirth. This is the law of her that has, bo has born a male within Jesus or a female. If she's not able to bring a lamb, she's too poor, she can't afford the lamb, then she shall bring two turtle doves, two young pigeons, the one for a burnt offering, the other for a sin offering. She can't bring a lamb. She got two turtle doves or two young pigeons. Go back. Go back to Luke 2, 24. I'm going to show you two things here. To offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law, Leviticus 12, a pair of turtle doves, two young pigeons, one, one offering was a burnt offering. The other one was a sin offering. Mary admitted she was a sinner by bringing turtle doves and young pigeons. She couldn't afford the land. She was not rich. Don't put her in rich clothing. She was not rich. Don't put her in sinless. She's a sinner. Oh, by the way, I just said it. She's a sinner. Luke 2, 24, Leviticus 12. She's also poor. The Catholic Church will dress her in blue and fine great linen. No, she wasn't. She was poor. She couldn't afford a lamb. And you know what? She couldn't, she couldn't bring a lamb, right? You know what she was holding in her arms? The Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Okay. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. I hope you're learning. You may know somebody who needs this. Share it. Send it out. Get it out. Like. Okay. Mary had no other children. Is not this a carpenter's son? Jesus. Joseph. Is not his mother called Mary? Yes. His brethren, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. Okay, no, 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 let's go to Mark. I love Mark and his gospel. Mark, say, too bad the churches don't. Is not this a carpenter, Joseph, son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, Judah, and Simeon? Are not his sisters with us? So the Catholic Church will say, well, you know, that's, that, that, you know how we call each other, you know, sister, we call each other brothers and all that. That's not the case. I got I got a brother. He's he's passed on. I don't brother Frank, how you doing? No, hey well, I call him, used to call him Frankie. Frankie, what's up? I don't say brother Frankie. And he was saved and I was saved. You don't say brother Styley. I got a sister, probably not say. I don't say sister Ashley. Come on. That's his family. That's Mary's children of Joseph. Mary was not a perpetual virgin. All right, John 3, 36. Hope this is helping you. Here's another one. We got two more after this. John 3, 30. We all go to the same place when we die. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. I have believed on the Son. And he that believeth not on the Son, you reject Jesus, shall not see life but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Okay? So either you will see eternal life or you will see the wrath of God. The wrath of God is hell. How about Luke 16? We'll put it all down in one thing. Luke 16. We all don't go to the same place. 16.22. And it came to pass the beggar died, the, the poor man, and was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his angel. The beggar went to Abraham's bosom. He didn't go, Jesus had not died. They didn't go to heaven until after Jesus died. The rich man woke up in hell. They didn't go to the same place. There's no purgatory. Okay. Luke 16, 
Okay, Exodus 20. Exodus 20. They say, we all go to the same place. Like they also say, we all worship the same God. Exodus 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God gives a warning. Don't serve other gods. So you do not serve. We do not serve the same God. There is God Almighty and there are gods. Allah is not God. Okay, the Kabillion Mount of Gods in India are not God. Zeus is not God. 23, chapter 23. Verse 17, I hope. My writing is terrible. Nope. 23. Two, twelve, three. No, I apologize. This one I don't. Twenty-three. All right, I apologize. Twenty-three. Just trying to think. Eleven. No. All right, I got this wrong. Is there a twenty-seven? Okay, I apologize. I... Judges. Judges. Judges shows I'm, no, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I sin. I'm not proud of it, but yeah. Judges 10, 13. You have forsaken me and served other gods. We don't serve the same God. Your Catholic God is not my God of the Bible. Your Muslim God is not my God of the Bible. Your Jehovah Witness God is not my God of the Bible. Your Mormon God is not the God of my Bible. Your evolutionary God is not the God of the Bible. Okay? Romans 8, 16. Last one. And I'll let you go. Romans 8, 16. We are all the children of God. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Okay, that sounds good. John. John 14. 12. Very glad I say to you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these I shall do because I go to the Father. Okay, that's God. That's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ and the Father. Now, verse 17. Even the Spirit true whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not and neither knoweth him. But ye know him for I dwell with, in, with you and shall be in you. Jesus said, the world that rejects Jesus and rejects the Father, the Holy Spirit's not in you. Paul will go say, we cry, Abba, Father, by the Holy Spirit indwelling us. If you don't believe on Jesus Christ, you don't get the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit is not in you by faith and belief in Jesus, you are not a child of God. Who are you a child of? Last verse. Eight. Why would Jesus say this? We all have the same father. 844. Ye of your father the devil, the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. He bold not. You got God the father. Those that believe on Jesus Christ. Those that have the Holy Spirit by faith and belief in the gospel. And if you reject Jesus, you reject God. The devil's your father. I thank you very much for, for listening. I hope you learned something. Play it back. Share it with your friends. Like our programming. Subscribe to us. May God come through your ears.
and into your heart. May you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And if you are saved, may you grow in the Lord to hear one day, well done. Thank you very much.